How many Vulcans were built in total? I think there was about 130 built in total, 120, 130 built in total, which were the prototypes B1s and B2s. What was the last B2 built? Last one built? I'm not sure it was with. Did you have get back to Woodford? Sorry? Did you have any back to Woodford? Uh, we have been at Woodford. Uh, I remember displaying at Woodford in 91, because I was bungee jumping up there, yeah. 91 was the last time I was at Woodford. Yeah, since it's been reclining, it's... No. I think we overflew it on one of the on routes, um, but there's a possibility we may end up going to Woodford later on this year if things pan out, but obviously that's the early days yet. Do you have to do any major overhauls, like you do on civil aviation aircraft? You know, the number of hours? Yeah, we've, um, we've just done our major overhaul now, and I think our next one's due in 10 years. Um, what we're doing now, we do a winter servicing every year, which is, uh, I think this one's going to be, uh, one we're doing now, or we should hopefully be starting in the next few weeks, is a primary servicing, it's a very basic one, because we just, uh, then we go up to the, the minor, primary star, and just build our way through up to the minor two stars, and until we get to the major. So the CAA haven't actually changed the servicing that the RAF used to do. Now we're still using the RAF systems. I'm still using the 700 log book and now we're just we're just following the old we've because we're actually designing our own maintenance procedure now we've sort of gone to Marshall and right we believe this is how we do it this is how it was used to be done in, in the RAF days when it was on the display team and we've taken along a very similar role and just sort of projected over the ten years. Are you getting much support from the RAF? Yes, we are getting support from the RAF. Uh, during the major overhaul, we had half a dozen electricians that were loaned to us at a cheap rate. Uh, <laughs> and they were actually, which actually helped them as well, because when they come out of their, their basic training and all that, they had to, to do their BTECs and various bits and pieces. And where they were going to actually put out into the bays, they weren't getting on the aircraft work. So them actually coming to us, getting hands on, benefited them and obviously benefited ourselves because it gives us an extra pair of hands. Um, they helped us last year, we was at Waddington and Bryce Norton from the summer seasons. Uh, so we took off from in July from Brentonthorpe and I landed back in Brentonthorpe in November. And in between that I was at Farnborough, Waddington and Bryce. And they looked after us well there. Um, I think the RAF might forget to charge us to land this year. Yeah. And yeah. hopefully, as I said, we hope we can get some uh, cheap fuel out of them as well. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to get back to Brentonthorpe by half past ten tomorrow because I'm showing somebody around from the MOD on the fuel side. <laughs> In the press last week, yep. more or less said that the uh, Royal Air Force had been approached and asked to take it on just as they came the Battle of Britain plant. Yep. Is that true? We have asked. No. <laughs> <laughs> they declined. Sorry? They declined to take it under. The RAF declined to take it under. They're struggling to keep their own BBMF and the red arrows going without. Yeah. How do you, I think some of this is, might cost us 10 million to run our red and red. We hope not. <laughs> I was surprised that um, your display charges are around by £8,000. Um, is there no scope to to sort of charge at cost? Yeah, and then we'd be displaying at Waddington. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's it, there's various things, because we always thought we had the Vulcan effect, we know the gate would increase by 20%, 25%. Okay, just give us a pound for anything above what you normally get. But we don't know, obviously we've got to go into negotiations with them, and obviously we try and get fuel, accommodations, various things that we can try and do. But with an air show, budgets are tight, and if we charge the full cost, they only have a set budget. We could take 25, 30% of their air show budget, and if it's a cloudy day, I can't fly. So I know where they come from, it doesn't help. But what we've got to try and do this year, which is one of the things we're looking at doing, is where we are going, we're going to try and go out to the local businesses and see if we can get them to sponsor us £500. £250, just get lots of the local businesses and when we turn up there we'll have a nice big board that they are sponsors to try and get these costs. What we've got to try and do is not only cover our costs 
but make a profit so we can put money into the coffers so we can keep going for next year. Because yeah. one thing we do not want to do is come around to you, the public, again next year and say, can we have another million, please? We've got, we, I said, we, we understand our, our business plan. Originally, we thought we'd have the corporates. It's not happened. So we've obviously, yep, we know that. So we're now trying to change our plan. And this is some of the things that we're looking at doing. Any chance of flying down the mall <laughs> on the Queen's birthday? No. <laughs> the CAA, we fly under a permit to fly. Permit to fly means you cannot fly over, you cannot fly over built up areas. It's a bit awkward trying to fly over this is house. When they, they did look on trying to do it, obviously for the anniversary for the Falklands, and I think the insurance quote for, for the aircraft was 10 billion. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you have any requests to go overseas with it? Yep. Uh, I'm hoping, or one of the things I'll be looking is Paris this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's another one I've, I've just found out about uh, yesterday, which is Vogel, which is in the Netherlands. That's a big air show. Um, some of the uh, Eastern Bloc have inquired. What's up? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there is, look, say, but whatever happens, wherever we go, we have to apply to them to go there. Our permit to fly is, if you like, a Britain MOT. Yeah. We can only fly in British airspace. If we have to go to France, we have to ask the French Aviation Authority, can we have a visa to come and play with you? What does the base display consist of? Uh, basic display can, oh, last year consists of uh, slow passing, power up, climb, not a, a tea drop like you said, but banking round, come back round, come round, open the bomb doors, loop round, close the bomb doors, round another tea drop, come back down and power out. But we are looking on, in, obviously that's the first year, first year the pilots have done anything, so yeah. this year we are actually building up on the display, and I was talking about that yesterday, and there's two or three other little things that they're thinking on doing, until they get up and play with it, <laughs> when they can fly the aircraft again in a couple of months' time. They'll be building on that, but they will be changing the display this year. We can't chuck it around the skies no more because, well, we could, but it, the aircraft probably will last about four or five years because of the fatigue and the engine life. So we've obviously we, we just got to try and nurse it. And what we're doing is presenting the aircraft in old days as opposed to displaying it, and then hopefully improve year by year. Then go with it the last year. <laughs> so you're believe in it. <laughs> you won't be it was a great tribute to the aircraft because it was built for high level yes. and uh, it did a great deal of low level, you know, it was thudding over Wales and Scotland and such places, it was a lot of low level. Yeah, because they've done the same with the Victor because they came down to low level and couldn't handle it, that's no, they, why they, no, they were converted they, they back. They went across to the flight refuelers because they couldn't mm -hmm. handle it, it was only the Vulcan out of the three V force mm -hmm. that could actually maintain the low level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The paddle behind the round just before the end, before yeah. the end, chill and say. <coughs> that, that's a door there, isn't it? No, there's no door there. The door's actually underneath the aircraft, right in front of the nose wheel. There wasn't a, a, a paddle in there somewhere to, if the plane came down somewhere, they could destruct it. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, there was, there's a little bit called, called a distractor on there, but there never was a panel that, that, that actually, because what they could do, they could pull it from the outside and the canopy would pop off. I know somebody worked on them and uh, one came back early and the door hadn't finished pro um, closed properly and it went into the intake. Yeah, not <coughs> that was, there is no door on the side there. It was after the early one. It could well have been the early ones. I was talking about the late 50s. Yeah, that, that would have been probably either the prototype or the B1. But these, oh, it does actually say it's destructive, I think. On some of the yeah, it's yeah, an anything destructive. But is there, there is there is nothing. nothing. There is nothing, there is nothing good in. Didn't you, on the, on the gold room, wasn't there sort of a, I don't want to use the word primitive, wasn't there a primitive computer that actually you have to have working to, to fly it? Yeah, because the, the old uh, military flight systems, yeah, yeah that's all that we fit those sat nav and sat the navigators. <laughs> yeah.